Hey everybody, today uh, we're going to do a project that I've been trying to videotape for a while. I haven't done a video in a long time, and mostly because I'm so busy making custom orders right now of pick guards. But I do want to put this out because uh, some people have uh, asked me for, you know, specific pick guards. They don't want wood, and I work almost exclusively with wood to make wood pick guards. Um, I do acrylic, so if you'd like a pick guard made in acrylic, I have clear and colors. I can definitely make you something really cool. But if you have a pick guard um, and you can't find a replacement or don't want me to make you a replacement, this is a great way to renew your pick guard. This one here is an Epiphone uh, Les Paul version uh, in classic black. It's a three ply, three ply with white in the middle. Three ply, yeah, it's three ply with white in the middle. Um, and if you can't find something to fit, this is what you're going to want to do. Go to your local sign shop and ask for automotive vinyl. Um, some sign shops don't deal with automotive. I think most do. Um, you can also order some on Amazon. I'm sure you can also get it on eBay as well, but you only need a small piece. So that's going to fit perfect in there. This piece is a scrap. It's, uh... Longest point about eight and a half by seven. This end here is about four inches. Um, go to your sign shop and ask them if they have a piece of scrap about that size or whatever size your pick guard is. So all you need is automotive vinyl. And the reason why I like automotive vinyl is because obviously made for autos, made to take a beating. What happens to your pick guard? Pick, 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 gets all scratched up. This is why you want automotive grade vinyl, because if you hit your pick on this vinyl, it is not going to mar it, scratch it, um, at least like regular vinyl would. Um, so this process is actually pretty simple. This pick guard is okay, but has some scratches, um, but I'm going to use this one anyway. So the first thing you want to do is take your pick guard and some alcohol and clean it. Just give it a good rub and wipe and dry it off. Make sure it's good and dry. There's no excess alcohol on it. Try not to touch it in the meantime. This mat is a, um, this is a, um, oh my god, what's wrong with me? It's a silicone mat, so it's actually sticking pretty well at the moment. Um, it won't completely stick all the time, but so now the next thing you want to do is figure out like how do you want to cut it. So this is going to be cut at an angle. So I'm going to pull this up for a second. When you're cutting, remember you want your color facing up. The same direction that your pick guard is that shows the face. Because if you do it backwards, you're going to cut it incorrectly. It'll be the wrong size and you won't be able to use it. So figure out your layout. If this is all excess, then you can put it anywhere you want. And then grab your scissors, and you're going to trim down to maybe a half inch. We're going to trim more than that, but I'm just going to trim this out because I don't want a lot of excess, but I want enough that I can still grab a hold of it. So for right now, I'm just going to do straight cuts and then come around the bottom, trim this out. And then here, you want to do a cut right about here give yourself about a quarter to half inch holding this in place do the same thing here try not to move your vinyl and we're going to cut right about here now in these cuts we're just going to cut them out so i'm going to flip this over take a look at it and i know i can cut these out and pull them out of the way same with this and we're going to get rid of all this extra stuff, get it out of the way. And we're pretty much set now. We have a very rough design of our pick guard. Okay, so this is clean. We're going to put our vinyl over our pick guard. So this is the fun part. The great thing about automotive vinyl, it's very flexible and it is very forgiving. It is meant to be forgiving. So what we're going to do is take our vinyl from the edges and find 
center points pretty much. What I'm doing is I'm looking here and here. So I go here, move it inward, and I know that I'm going to hit it pretty much and everything's going to be covered. So hit the top point first, pull this back, and I'm going to grab my squeegee with the felt on it. You can find these at Walmart or automotive places. And all I'm going to do is lay this down and gently, I'm not pushing, I'm just kind of guiding this along until I get to the bottom here. Okay, that's your first step. Get my scissors out of the way. Now, this actually went on very nicely. Pull the camera down. No wrinkles, no bubbles, everything seems to be in the right spot. So, with a heat gun or a hair dryer, all I'm going to do is hit this with a little bit of heat. You can see how it's curling up at the edges. I'm going to go from the center here, outward, center, outward, center, outward. So what we're doing is we're drawing a, a center line and going outward, center line and going outward. That's how quickly this goes on, okay? Now we can see the outline of our pick guard. And we can actually take your finger and follow the edge of the outline and tighten it up. When you get to the corner here, what we're going to do is pull these edges up. And I don't think I'm going to have to cut it. At least I don't think I have. Uh, I might not have to cut it. I'm going to pull these corners up. Hit it with some heat. And I'm going to push like with my finger over and around. Over and around. Over and around. What this is going to do for me is now this sets the edge really nicely. So that when I pull it up, I can just trim everything off. So I'm going to do this all the way around. Pull this up a little bit, set the edges. So actually, I'm going to pull this up before heat all the way around because I'm going to do this fairly quickly. And you can do the same thing. It just is really is a very short process. Where's my knife? Um, work on something that you can pull this off. Do not work on cardboard. Um, work on a countertop. Work on whatever you can find, but don't work on um, on anything where it's going to stick to that you're having a problem with. So I'm going to bend this back down, hit it with heat. I'm going to push, gently work this into the corners. And again, we're doing this. We're not going to go from the corner here. We're going to go from these corners into this corner here. Okay. these corners now since the these corners here are tight you can see that it's popping up I'm gonna make a cut so I'm gonna put my fingertip here go straight down and out straight down and out this is going to give your vinyl enough room to move inward as it needs to I'm gonna go back in here and peel up this vinyl off the top because I don't I want to give it the opportunity to move on its own. That's the great thing about automotive vinyl is that it will move on its own if you let it. And that's all the heat you need. You don't need much heat. Okay, when we get to the side here. This is a very tight point here, so I'm going to cut. I'm going to find the end end of the bottom layer, which is right about here, and I'm cut out. And then I'm going to pull it up to make sure that it's cut all the way through on both sides. I'm going to pull this up as well, just to loosen. Here at this point, I'm going to make one small cut here. Because this has a corner as well. It's got a kind of a loopy corner up here. In fact, I'm going to put one right in the middle as well. And then I'm going to pull all this off of my silicone to give it room to contract and move. Looks like I picked up some tape on my board here. So I'm going to have to start down here and pull this back. 
is I have a piece of tape holding my silicone together. This is actually the back of my mat. Um, so I don't want to pull too much farther or I'm going to rip this. So anyway, I'm going to tuck the corners. Heat it up. You can see it kind of starts contracting in. And it's pretty much done. So now what I'm going to do is gently, I'm going to cut this away because I have tape. You can see attached to my tape here. Um, and I don't want to damage my vinyl. I'm going to cut this vinyl pretty close to the edge. Get rid of it. Again, it's because of the tape here. But I'm still going to leave a little bit for myself. And then from down here, I'm going to pull up this vinyl. And I'm going to pull this whole thing off of my... Pull it all off my board. Grab that tape out of the way. That is not something you're going to have to deal with unless you have tape on your board. So, on the back side here, you can see that everything's set pretty well. It's actually set all the way to the edge of the backing here, which is really nice. So, all we want to do is fold it up like this. You can take your hand and just fold it up and grab a piece. And then with your knife at a, yeah, I will say at an angle. I'm not even going to tell you what number because this, this is actually flexible. Um, you want to let your knife guide along the edge here. So pressure and just guide along the edge. And this is going to trim off the vinyl really nicely, nice and clean. Make sure your knife is super sharp. You definitely want to. nice clean cut so on this corner here I'm gonna leave that to last but I am gonna cut right down to here so I'm cutting down to the top here I'm also gonna do the same thing in this corner here cut that corner because these corners are already cut now I can fold this at that edge and do the same thing find the top and just glide your knife across the top of the back here do the same here. If it doesn't start cutting right away, push and just give it a little sawing action to get it going. And then just let it glide across. You don't want to have to hack at it. If you're hacking at it, you're making a mess. And you definitely don't want to make a mess. This corner here, I'm going to cut it again in half. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it down right like that. There's a little bit left there, so I'm just going to shave that. Now, this side here is already in place. I'm going to cut into the corner in two places, one here and one here. Fold these in, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Now, when I fold this up, I can see this piece is a little bit long, so I'm going to fold that inward. I'm going to cut straight down and leave that little piece there and come back for it later. So I'm going to take this off. You want to do as many clean swipes as possible, then go back and clean up the corner. So this corner here, I've got a plenty of a tab I can pull on it, so I'm going to pull upward and just give it a quick cut. Okay, and then pull everything inward. So you're pulling all this into the back. We'll finish that up in a second here. So these corners are cut pretty well. I'm going to dig in a little bit closer. So I'm going to take this piece, cut, cut, and then I'm going to cut straight down on this one to there. I'm going to grab this piece here. Guide and cut. I'm going to cut this corner here, same as I did on the last one. And I'm going to cut. I had to cut outward on that one because it's really hard to grab. Push this in the corner, see where we're at here. 
Um, if it starts not sticking, it keeps kind of coming down here. I'm going to hit it with some heat. Fold it over. Okay. So on the corner here, or I should say the tip, I already have it cut to here. And hopefully you can see how you have it kind of angled upward and into the corner. So I'm going to cut the corner. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut the middle. Oh, I already did. So it's already cut from here and then from here. At the tip, that's going to be the that, that's going to be the fun part. So from here, I'm going to guide my knife if I can get it started and cut all the way up. And then here, I might actually just leave that there. When you get to the tip and you have this piece hanging off, you're going to cut downward this way. So I'm going to find the tip, put my finger there, and just do a cut deep enough to take off this piece of vinyl. Now you got a nice clean shot at getting a decent tip here. So again, we're going to heat very quickly. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to grab it and do a quick trim. And here, I'm going to leave this piece hanging here because it's stuck on there nicely. So it kind of looks a little raggedy on the back side, but look at the front side. Now all we have to do is go back and hit it with some heat. And take your finger and we're going to go downward just like I'm doing with my, my finger here. You can also use this. I'll do this more so for the straight edges here. And this is what you're going to do. You're just going to angle it down like that. Okay? Never up. Always down. And then when you get toward the bottom, you're going to kind of wrap around the edge there. You're going to, as you're holding, uh, what do you say, 45 degrees. Because that's going to really secure it against the edge there. These corners here, I like using my thumb. Your skin is much more pliable, will move better to get it close against the edge. So the tip here, there is a piece of vinyl, so I'm going to pinch it together and let it attach to itself. Now you can leave that point as is, which I will do, um, or you can try to trim it off. Quite honestly, it looks a nice, like a nice short point. I'm just gonna leave it. There's a little bit here. Um, I'm not gonna heat that. What I'm gonna do, try to do is cut it. So I'm gonna try to pinch it upward, and then I'm gonna try to do a quick inward cut I don't know how well it's going to work because my knife is starting to get dull. And it has to be super sharp to do this. Um, the other option is to drag a knife this way. So grab the tip and just kind of pinch it off just like I did. Now you got a nice corner there. We'll do the same thing here. So I'm going to find that little piece. Place my finger as a guide. And just a quick, and then you can pull it out this way. Remember, everything is inward. You want to work inward toward the edge here. Now, let me see if this edge will look any better. So you can see kind of bubbly little pieces in the edge. Um, these pick guards are not super, super um, perfectly edged. So they're not going to be super smooth. And you can see the way that this is sitting, that it's not. And that's okay because you're not going to see that. What you want to do is look this way, see what your corners look like, see if they need trimming, see if you need to pull them down. A little bit of heat, probably, you know, try to pull them down. Um, once you're happy, and again, you're not going to get it 100% perfect like paint, because it's not paint. Um, but you can make it look really awesome, because remember... And this is true with all my photos and my pick guards. This is what you're this is what I'm showing you in my photo. You are about 
eight inches away from the pick guard. When you are playing the guitar, this right here is about 18 inches. Camera's about 18 inches away. You're not going to see the edges. You're not going to see those little tiny points. And that's really up in your face in your guitar. You're not going to see it. Your friends are not going to see it. The people who are watching you play are not going to see it. So don't worry about it. Um, also, you can see this right here. Don't worry about it. Because once it goes, once it goes next to the um, the pickups, you're not going to see any of that. You're not going to see any. Of that. You might see this teeny tiny piece sticking up here. If you want to heat it up again, try to take it off. That's fine. Nobody's going to see the edge, so you can actually trim that off completely. In fact, let's do that anyway. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna work it outward, and see if I can get it out of there. Yep. Yeah. Took most of it off. Okay, so done with that part. Let's go on to doing the screw holes. So you can try with this knife. Um, I prefer an X-Acto knife because the tip is much smaller. What you're going to want to do is heat really quick. You see that? I don't know if you saw it. It popped up or in. It didn't do it again. But anyhow, um, once it's heated, just push your finger in and there's your spot. Take your knife, center of the hole, move outward just a hair, down, over, very quickly, down, and now it's starting to cool, so I'm going to start from, from each side. So what you're going to do is once it's cooled and it's in place, down, in, down, in, down, in. Next step, and I'll do this other screw, screw hole in a second. Um, two things. So... You can do it with a screwdriver, but if you do, do not put it in and twist. And that's the that's the problem with the screwdriver. Um, I've done it before where I put it in, accidentally turned it because it's a friggin' screwdriver. I don't know why I did it because I knew what I was doing. Q-tips work better. So hit it with heat. And then push and hold. Q-tip is perfect because it, it, it conforms to the inside of the hole. Okay, so you can see that looks pretty damn good. Now, when the screw goes in, you're not going to see the inside of the hole. You will see the edge, and that's what you want to make sure is pretty perfect or close to it. So this hole is up here. I'm going to hit this with some heat. Push. You can see the tip of the hole now. And cut and cut. Again, we're going to hit it with some heat, push the Q-tip in, you can hold, let it cool, done, okay? And you can see it looks kind of raggedy inside, but that's okay, because what you're looking at is the lip. You can see how nice and clean that lip is. So when the screw goes in, um, one, don't tighten it super tight, because if you tighten it super tight, it's going to tear your vinyl. Um, the other option is to try to get the vinyl out before you put the screw in, but quite honestly, people, I think, um, don't understand that the screw is to hold things in place. It's not to hammer it into your soundboard or your top. Um, it's just to hold it in place. Same thing with here. When you're putting your bracket on, put your screw through. Um, you can hold it with a screwdriver if you need to, but tighten from the back. You're going to want to tighten that nut from here not from here, because every time you twist here, you're starting to now dig into your vinyl. Tighten it from the back. And it doesn't have to be so damn tight that, that you'll never be able to get it off again. Just tighten it down a little bit, because that bracket's going to come out, attach to the body, and then it's not going to move anywhere. So no worries about that. So, that's that. What do you think? So you take a crappy-looking pick guard, and you turn it into something really cool. Um, the great thing is, if you want, you can take off the vinyl, do it once a year, once a month, once a week, I don't care, um, or leave it on there forever. Um, it, it just is a really great option for repairing your pig guard and um, maybe being more creative. Maybe put some designs on it, do whatever you want to do, like do whatever you want to do. There's so many colors and, and stuff for vinyl and there's already patterns in vinyl and multicolored vinyls. Um, just grab whatever you want, get creative, get that pick guard covered. And now you don't have to worry about ever buying another one unless you physically break it. So I hope that helps you guys and gals out. Have a great day. Thanks.